bloggers pow Right, let's have a look at four games for the PC Engine CD, Auto Hoopo Graphics 16 CD, if you will. They may have passed you by. I know they probably did me. We, the Special Mission Unit, were sent here to rescue hostages upon a request from the Lloyd government. There was, however, no sight of a camp at the designated location. We had been tricked by the Lloyd regime. What met our eyes instead was... Right, this is Last Alert, aka, confusingly, Red Alert, in um, Japanese territory. So we're playing the US version here. So straight in with the first mission, and it's a run and gun. With some quite funky music too. And some really gory deaths as well. Um, I remember playing this quite some time ago in its Japanese incarnation. And it's, uh, it was good. But I do remember getting annoyed with it for some reason and I can't remember why. So maybe we will be finding out. Now this is unusual for a, a running gun because it's got experience points. And as you shoot more soldiers, your experience points goes up and you level up. And I can't remember what le leveling up does. Maybe it gives you more power or I don't know I mean it's like it's not like an RPG where you can increase your attack power on the pea shooter pistol I've got at the moment which is apparently a Colt 911 but manages five three shot bursts so you know that's the thing um a life bar down there as well and so I've just lost a piece of and some pickups are coming up here Quite a lot of backtracking backwards and forwards. And I've levelled up. I'm now a sharpshooter rather than a ranger. So, go, go, sharpshooters, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe this increased the range of my gun slightly? I'm not entirely sure what it's done. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments. Anyway, is this going to be a boss? Large, inconspicuous area. Oh no, it's not. And confusingly, for this kind of game, those bells don't explode. Oh, that's right, I've picked up a special weapon which toasts people. Quite handy, and there's a health pack. Yeah, so far so good. No real great shakes. I mean, to be honest, it's not as graphically impressive as, say, Bloody Wolf is on PC Engine. And that guy appeared to have an asbestos waistcoat on and didn't burst into flames. Well, luckily, there is some more health. Guy, and we've got... You don't want the hostage killed. You should... <laughs> Guy, the stealth bomber is in the back of this factory. Who's <laughs> that Bonnie Gumbel? <laughs> Hang in there just a while longer. Oh. So the idea probably not to shoot the hostage. Chuck. Oh, I've got a rotating thing. Okay, that's handy. Probably time based. I think the flames were was. Oh, and Barney Gumble's dead. You successfully rescued your colleague and obtained the necessary information. Proceed with him to the hangar of the stealth aircraft. So, ah, right, okay. Now I remember how far I got with this. Well, plant bombs, fair enough, but you've got a time limit. It's ten minutes. It seems generous. I seem to remember finding the bombs, or where to plant the bombs at least, was actually a huge pain in the ass, especially with all these respawning enemies going around. So, crap, and stuff like that happening as well. We've leveled up again. I must check my inventory actually once I'm in a safe space. Ah, an Uzi. Yes, we shall equip the Uzi. 
Oh, okay, interesting. The Uzi lets you lock your position of fire. That is excellent. This now is starting to shape up. I do, like I say, remember this bit where you're trying to find these bombs, or at least where to plant the bombs, took a hell of a lot of time. Right, so I've got all the bombs now. Uh, there is an escape route up here, which is probably heavily guarded by a tank thing. Excellent. Flamefur doesn't seem to be doing much damage. Just a, just a gunnery guy is getting all the damage. Oh god, I'm losing life the right of knots here is getting rather tough oh and I died just as I was killing it bombs will be soon place your colleague seems to have successfully captured the stealth aircraft's escape now so I just about managed to scrape through that by the skin of my teeth and this now this bit is forced scrolling so I don't have any control of how it's uh, how it's going. My life bar is larger, so I'm guessing the um, experience I'm gaining is uh, increasing my life bar, if nothing else. And I can't look into a diagonal position backwards for some reason, which is annoying. And I'm dead. Oh crap. Oh, like there's still fighters taking off. Right on! Right, get it in the back of the stealth fighter! And if we go on a merry adventure in a stealth fighter, I guess. So, oh, we're on a snowy adventure now. And where are we going on a snowy adventure? Upwards, by the looks of things, rather than in multiple directions. Interesting. I'm going to think a bit more pulp from the Uzi yet, though. You can't go behind these trees. They're completely two-dimensional. Look, you just can't walk past them. Ah, serious jank. I love it. Yeah, it's sort of sort of fun. It's a it's a run gun with a bit more of a. Uh, bit more to do than a normal running gun so that's good and here comes another two bosses while well, moving on briefly into the enemy camp stop okay stop nothing happened oh well I'm gonna continue I'm gonna ignore the sign and yeah last alert aka red alert aka not a command and conquer game ain't too bad not fantastic but if you want a running gun with a bit more meat to its bones this should do you well. So in a story of cops not actually obeying the superiors and going off um, on their own, this is Riot Zone and this is known in Japan as Crystal the Wolf, I believe, I can't remember. Let's have a look. So you start off by selecting a character, you can have Hawk or Tony. Hawk or Tony. Hawk or Tony. Hawk, Tony. And wanted first off for these people, they're worth eight thousand dollars or points. Seriously, make your mind up. And of course, it's pissing down because it's the British summer. And you've really got a PC Engine sideways going beat 'em up, which plays quite fluidly. If you ever played Golden Axe on the PC Engine, you know how bad it can be. Golden Axe on the PC Engine is absolutely shocking. Ooh, street food, fantastic. No dash controls, just standard jump and attack. So essentially sort of final fight controls, walking somebody to grab them into a hold and then throw them over your shoulder. I've just noticed the characters have names, so that was Johnny we just beat up. Who's next? Who are you? Thin Liz. 
there's whiskey in her jar. Is that Finley? I can't remember. And Slim, and talking Slim, his fats! Because naming conventions, I suppose. But yeah, so far it's sort of fluid enough. It doesn't look like it's two players though. Because there isn't room in GUI for a second player. It's taken up by Pretty Boy's health bar. Pretty Boy. He looks just like Fats except wearing green trousers. That makes him pretty. And he dropped me a camera. Lovely. Get that developed later. I'll just point it at CEX, I guess. King Cool. So, I'm Paula. King Cool and Paula. So even the palette swaps have uh, different names, which is nice, I guess. King Cool looks a little bit like Karnov. Excellent. More street food. Oh, and we got Fats back and Pretty Boy back and Charlie. Welcome to the fight, Charlie. Having fun? You won't be. I do like it in this kind of game where you can throw people into other people. I was going to this handy log cabin in the middle of the city. Maybe it's set in Canada. Oh! Obligatory lift stage already on the first level. We got Bonnie, Paula and Finn Lizzie as well. The gang's all here. And we're seeing see those green stilettos not doing any favours love. And pressing start button does a special which wipes out some of your energy. It is like Final Fight, have an ice cream. Yeah, I suppose by the standard of the day it's not too bad. But um, it's the thing, these days there's so many more scrolling beat-ups that you can play um, which are more fluid. I mean obviously there's... I'm not even going to go, you know the ones I'm talking about. On the Super Nintendo, on the Mega Drive, and nowadays on the Switch and the PS4, there's loads of them. It's interesting to find these ones that you didn't know about and haven't played before, but while you're playing them, you can't help thinking, why aren't I playing one of the other ones? So, up on the roof. Come on, Hawk, let's fly. His walking animation's a little funny. I do, I do dig that in a sort of crap, funky, skillow sort of way. <laughs> Paula, the green stilettos, love. Seriously, give it up. It's a bad idea. Right, this looks like a boss. Mr. Lee. Wow, that's um, imaginatively named, isn't it? And he's got the multicoloured life bar of a boss. So good for him. I've got seven lives now, by the way. Mr. Lee just jumped off Oh no, we're all jumping off the building because that sounded like a good idea at the time. And here he is again with his friend. Oh right, the two people from the Wanted Post, of course. Miss Chan and Mr. Lee. Miss Chan doesn't appear to have the uh, multicoloured life bar that Mr. Lee has. Enough to do a special? Yes, we do. And we've lost a life. The tragedy. Come on, we've got loads left. I've, I've done them both at the same time. Round clear. Very final fight, that, isn't it? Off we go. Have a quick look at stage two, shall we? So, on we go. We're not going to pay attention to the signs for the second game in a row. So, keep out, it's said, and we're not going to. Because we're. Cool, we need a rusty bike. There we go. Fantastic. Everyone's been on it. Like your mum. And we're beating up Jim Bob and Little Sam. These are the most amusing bad guy names I've ever heard in this kind of game. Jim Bob and Little Sam. Who are we going to meet next? Old Greg. Oh no, that's, that's Slim, isn't it? And Little Sam. Oh, it's Johnny, not Slim. I'm sorry, Johnny. I mean, I know it's often a problem with this kind of game, is the repetitive nature of the um, 
of the uh, goons that are sent after you. Hello, Jim Bob. Um, but these ones are, are very, very generic. They've all got really the same attack pattern apart from the fat guys. Jim Bob does exactly the same thing as Johnny does, for example. Oh, Jesus! Lucky Luke's here with his sunglasses and his sliding attack. Just to prove me completely wrong. Timing, Luke. Timing, mate. And Fast Eddie's here too. Fast Eddie and Lucky Luke. Two um, powerhouses of the community. Together at last. Apart from I've killed Fast Eddie and Lucky Luke's not very far behind me. Here comes Little... Look, this is Clyde apparently. This is Clyde. Hello Clyde. So yes, Riot Zone is and also ran beat em up by today's standards. Back in the days probably would have been quite good fun. Missing a two-player mode, like I mentioned, which is a shame, but... Do you know what? There's not much on the PC Engine that can even come close to it, to be honest. Not a system that's known for its scroll and beat em up, so um, this is sort of welcome. Um, and if you've got a couple of minutes spare and you really want to make the likes of Clyde and Jim Bob and Slash here, um, buy it up and give it a go. And next up we have Road Spirits, which I think is bringing its presentation inspiration from an 80s game show. But hey-ho! Are you ready? Well, yes I am, that's why I pressed the start button. If I press no, what's going to happen? Oh, I see, it takes you into an option so I can change cars. So let's have a look at the options. So we've got, what's that, a Honda NSX and a... Lamborghini Diablo, you've got two oh no, you've got, oh, a Ferrari F40 and a Porsche 911 well, Ferrari F40 is going to be it, isn't it? Uh, and it's alright, there we go, Ch game show alright, alright and I think what we've got here very much is Outrun Light very light and you've got uh, a distance gauge there a generous time limit of nearly four minutes off, off the starting block so that's good um, nice road effects hills corners skids oh I'm just really surprised I managed not to go into the back of that green car that would have been bad for our insurance policies No real, there's no um, indication of position or anything like that, so it really is just a race against the clock, like Outrun. And it definitely wears its Outrun influences on the sleeve here. The nice little road was a little wider, but it's fine. You can't just burn around at top speed, you've got to decelerate and do a tab of braking when you're um, doing these corners, but you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of digging this. Don't know why it's a CD game apart from the music, which is obviously Red Book. What happened there? It just spun out for no reason whatsoever. That's weird. Oh god, no, when's the back of that car? And he's back for more. Bastard. Oh, he's changed lanes. What an absolute bell end. I think we're doing okay for time, though. Don't appear to have any boosts or turbos or anything like that, but that's fine. Oh, we've hit a slimming... Is that an advert for cigarettes saying they can help you lose weight? Wow, that's a product of its time. Or maybe the cigarettes are slim cigarettes, but blimey, either way. Wouldn't get that in today's games, would you? 
Hell, you can't even get a proper advert in pole position these days. And this is probably an advert for, I don't know, some dolphin meat or something? I don't know. I'm not going to crash into it to find out what it says. I did spend a lot of time behind that blue car that wouldn't get out of the way. Oh, here comes another one. Right, 41 seconds. Whoa. That's a rip with some chest hair. Oh no, we've spun out on the cigarette adverts again. Don't think we're going to make this. Really could have done without that. Oh, sodding blue guy. Absolute bell end bastard. 11 seconds. Oh, we've just made it. So there's our um, list of races we're going to do, apparently. I'm not sure we're going to do all of them. I very much doubt it. We're going to see what Key West is like. I it's like Suzuka. Oh, blimey. Try next road. I will do, love. Thank you very much. You have fun there. So there we go. I'd imagine being uh, Key West and that bridge from True Lies to Harrier blew up. If I come off the edge, I'll probably die. But hey, we've got nearly four minutes to find out. Minus editing. Of course, the bridge means we're not getting any adverts for cigarettes or um, dolphin meat on the edge of the road. But uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, crap, nearly wins the back of that Porsche. Strange that the, it does that weird thing where cars and distance are really big and then they get a little bit smaller and then they get bigger again. So yeah, Road Spirits is um, interesting. A sort of outrun light, like I said. Nothing really wrong with it. It's a little bit bland, but you know what? It's, it's fine. I like the presentation. I like the music. I like the adverts of cigarettes and dolphin meat. So yeah, it's, um, it's alright. It's alright. I'm probably... Worth a few minutes of your time. Fire it up. Why don't you, eh? Why not? Right, there was an animated intro, but I skipped it. So this is Rennie Blaster. And you pick one of two guys to, um, I don't know, blast some Rennies. So what have they got against indigestion tablets? I really don't know. So what we appear to have here is some sort of rolling fighting game where you can do hold down the button and do special moves so that's quite nice oh here comes some bigger guys and we can do that well that's quite handy yes hold it down so the bar at the top turns three times you can do a projectile attack but if you get interrupted doing it you lose some health and the power up that you've done so far so ooh, nice big Chinese gates there I've seen China's hound somewhere that's nice Jump button, okay. Good jump. And hit. So, yeah, so far, a bit like Kung Fu Master. Not bad. A little bit bland. It could do some parallax scrolling in the background, that's for sure. And the enemies don't have names, so that's a letdown. Music is getting my tits already. Oh, you can charge your move while you're walking, so that's handy. Nice, bit, nice bridge. I like the bridge. I'm getting, strangely enough, I'm getting Renegade on the Master System vibes. Just from the way the main character's drawn, I don't know why. I mean, it's obviously nothing like Renegade, apart from the fact you hit people. Oh, that guy's got magical bullshit. Oh, oh what? That's serious magical bullshit. Wow, okay, he was a bit... Oh, there's a girl. Hello. You're going to hit me. No, you're going to tell me something. And I'm not happy about it. Maybe she stole all my Renny and I wanted to blast it. Who knows? He does look like he's got indigestion. So now we're going to fight some more people. I don't know what they're saying, but hey ho. Yes, not a... Um, I mean, it's okay. The gameplay's no great shakes. I mean, it really is, like I say, really Kung Fu Master. 
my health has gone up somehow. I don't remember picking up the pick up, but maybe the girl gave me some Gaviscon or something and that sorted me out. Who knows? Oh, anything to declare in the uh, luggage lounge? No, we're going to go straight in and start stealing bags. Oh! Fell down a hole. My life has gone back up now, so that's something. Yeah, the combat at this point is actually more tedious than fun. It's just a case of rinse repeating, charging and just avoiding. So it's almost like trying to do a one-on-one -on -one fighting game thing, but with multiple characters and scrolling stages. So it's it, it, it's irritating. Okay, right, so let's go this way. There's a scroll. No idea what scroll does. And you travel faster by jumping. Oh, we're out onto the runway. And there's an old man boss thing. And he is the guardian of, I don't know, some name another indigestion tablet or, or remedy. He's not doing anything. Oh, she sent for a fucking great night. Was not expecting that. There was not on the bingo card. But again, I'm just charging and firing and charging and firing. And he's put his halberd down because he doesn't need the halberd, John. Oh dear, I'm dead. No, let's continue. Let's just go straight and just get in there with the punching. Yeah, series of one-on-one -on -one beat -em up encounters, I'd say, but... Oh, we've beaten the... Oh, I see, we're in Geneva. So this is European. Even though we're a Chinatown in Geneva? I don't know. Yes, let's pull up. Nice and pretty. Oh! <laughs> Popping mummies in Geneva. Because that's something that Switzerland's well known for. Very neutral mummies, I'd say. And my moves appear to be getting a bit more fluid, and now I've gone into somebody's house. Where there's more hopping mummies. Again, the hopping mummies with their arms stretched out. It's a Chinese thing again. So um, I wonder if there's a very Chinese background to this game. I don't know. But in Geneva? So strange. Oh, and there's a... <laughs> an Elizabethan man with a great big ruffle thing around his neck and another power-up thing. And the backgrounds are starting to look a bit shit now. Oh. Boss? Yep, somebody else. It's Captain Skullface, because of course it is. Oh my god, he's really nicely animated with this tentacle thing and the spikes. However, he's a so far a complete walkover. Wow. That was just like the easiest boss ever. It's just not fun. I mean, it's good because there's a certain comedy value there. Talking comedy values, what the actual fuck is going on now? What the actual... Okay. I really... I, I have, I, I, I'm sorry, I haven't got anything left. I, I, I don't know what's going on. And I've got to fight fucking Pinocchio now. And he's already almost dead. I know he's got a scary face. What the hell is going on? And now it looks like Castlevania. And there's a strange morphing guy there. I must admit, it is, it's not interesting to play. But it is throwing a lot of surprises in my direction. So yes, I would actually now recommend playing this just to see how crazy this gets. How far does the rabbit hole go with this? Very, very unusual.
So there we go, four games for the Peace Engine CD. Bit of a mixed bag, wasn't it? But what did you think of them? Comment below. Yeah, subscribe or naff off.